Hey guys, uh, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number 25 on inheritance. So inheritance is one of the most important uh, concepts of uh, programming in object-oriented programming because it allows you to just develop a class and then maybe someone wants to extend that class, basically keep on working on that class um, once it's already packaged, right? Um, so I'm going to show a little bit, uh, some examples. Um, quite quickly and you'll see how useful it is, right? So let's start by saying void setup. Um, right, uh, so basically what we want to do is just get to a class and make a very simple class. Right. We have a very simple setup here. And let's go ahead and do a class called ball. Right, so class ball. Oops. Ball. Right. Or ball. requires what let's say something like um, float x comma float y um, and um, yeah I'm gonna do that trick to just use this as global variables right float x and float y and x equals underscore x y equals underscore y right so I'm trying to just do a very simple class void display let's do an ellipse uh, in x comma y comma 20 comma 20 right uh, straightforward. So now, if we say something like ball, ball one, ball one equals a new ball in maybe two hundred comma two hundred. We can say something like ball one dot display. So we have it in the screen. And that's it, right? Very straightforward. So let's talk about the idea of inheritance, right? What if we want to just do a... We could have like several functions here, many, many of them. And we want to do another class that will kind of start with all these. We could just ba basically copy all this stuff, just change the name of the class and keep on adding functions, right? Um, but uh, let's put some few more functions so we can just make that point more clear. So let's say void uh, update could be something like um, x uh, plus equals speed x and y plus equals speed y. And we could say that float speed x equals one speed y equals one. Right? So in this case, they will. If we would call the, fun uh, the, the function update, it will move. Um, we could uh, basically we could have all sorts of functions here. But I want to explain how can we actually create a new class that would take all that consideration. So, for instance, I'm going to say new tab. I'm going to say um, my, my moving ball. Right. So I could say class. Uh, moving ball right and here we could say the keyword extends 
right? Meaning that it will kind of inherit everything from another class. So we will say ball, right? So in this way, we're saying this is this class is a subclass of ball, right? So here we could just basically copy the name of our class now, put our constructor, and our constructor we could put a um, Basically, we could put whatever we want, right? In this case, if we want to just have also x and y, we would have to put the following float uh, underscore x, comma, float underscore y. And then we would have to say super, right? It's meaning uh, basically overriding x. Uh, or underscore x comma uh, underscore y. So you see that our class now, we don't have any errors, right? But this is the way in which we are defining our my moving ball, right? So let's see, without having any functions here, if we could actually call some of the functionality of this class, right? Um, so let's see, for instance, just let's call the name of the class. It could have been something simple, but so my moving ball could be my moving moving ball one M -M right? And my moving ball one will be a new my moving ball of a hundred comma a hundred, right? Let's see, we have any errors so far? Nothing yet. Same thing. Uh, and now we can actually say dot display. Let's see. And you see that in this case, my moving ball is being displayed here. And that this doesn't have any function whatsoever here, right? So we have two functions here, update and display, and we can call my moving ball on one dot move, or sorry, update, right? And you can see that my moving ball, it's moving, right? It has all the functions of this main class and inherited all that information here, right? So that's the idea of inheritance. This is the keyword in which how we do it. We extend the class ball. So this class, it's, in, uh, it's basically has everything that ball has and plus we can have our own functions, right? So we could say line, sorry, uh, void, draw, line. And it could be something like a line from x comma y to zero comma zero, right? So and maybe we could do that in a stroke that is red. So now we have a new function. We need to call that function. We could say mmb01. That's the name of our instance. And draw a line. Right. So you can see that the function draw line draws that red line uh, to the um, zero zero point. Just to show some example. But if we grade this out and we try to call that function in ball one to the draw line. Basically, the same function, it will tell us draw line doesn't exist, right? So it works one way, like this is a subclass and it has more functionality than the ball class, right? But it, we don't need to copy again all the functions that we had in the other one, right? So that's the idea of inheritance. Um, the other thing that we could do here is just if we were to just write again a function like function display, right? the function will be override, right? So we could say rectangle um, x, 
formula y from y to y equal to a, right? So you'll see that in this case, oops, um, right, I forgot a semicolon there. So you'll see that in this case, our moving ball is now a rectangle, it's not a ball, right? Because we override the display function. So if we repeat the same function that already exists in the main class, we can override and change that function. But if not, we could stick with the functions that has been uh, inherited from the other class. Also look at the global variables have been inherited as well, right? So we need to be to specify this kind of stuff. So a very short way of making a class. This is extremely useful at the moment of using libraries, right? So for instance, if you want to just do an agent or something, maybe you want to do is class agent extend uh, Vec3D, right? Because Vec3D from Toxic Leaves is such a powerful class that contains all the vector math and all sorts of uh, great calculations that, that an entity could have, right? Um, so you could say that agent uh, float x comma float y comma float set. This is the constructor of the and super um, x comma y comma set, right? So this class now. Uh, this class can uh, inherit all the information from a library, right? So we're going to import toxi.geom and let's check if we don't have any errors. We do. Uh, unexpected token void. Yeah, just being silly. So there we go, I think. Cool. So now, if we would call that class agent, so agent, we call anything Smith, right? We could say Smith, like a vector, right? Equals a new uh, agent, and we could say 0, 0, 0, right? And this is like a we can do vector math with that guy now. He has all the vector math functions. So Smith dot add self dot sub self dot like basically everything that is in the vector three D class we could do, right? But at the same time we could say something like void display, right? And we could say ellipse in x comma y comma ten comma ten, so a small one. Um, so we could say Smith dot uh, display right so there we have Smith and then we could say Smith dot add self um, basically a vector right so we can make a vector of like 3d v equals new like 3d of 0, 0,1, 0, 0,1, 0, 0,1, 0, and we could add b to our agent now, and you can see that our agent is moving. But basically, Smith now as an as a class, and it's been very simple here how we describe it, an extension of the vector 3D class can actually receive, it has all the vector math functionality already and it could actually be drawn uh, with a new function display, right? So very, very handy to just know how to inherit the information of a library. So basically you're not starting from scratch, whatever library you find out there, you can extend the class and build a functionality. It gets a little bit more tricky when you when a class, let's say, requires you to just deal with several classes to work with. So um, let's say our classes are codependent, uh, so sometimes you will have to inherit quite a bit of things. But uh, the general concept here, it's I hope clear. Um, we're inheriting all the information, and you're keeping your 
code very short. Uh, it's important that you learn how to just go and check into the documentation of the classes to know how to, um, what kind of information does the constructor have. have. Um, so you can actually uh, extend the class properly and, and put the information that is required, right? Um, so that's it for now. I hope you got it, and I'll see you guys soon.